Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Monday, March 14th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The spring game is in 33 days, the Notre Dame game in 173 days, the game against Michigan in 257 days, and a very happy Pi Day to all who celebrate. In case you missed it over the weekend, the Ohio State women's hockey team advanced to the Frozen Four, beating Quinnipiac in overtime. They will face Yale on Friday in State College, Pennsylvania, with a spot in the national championship game on the line. That was a fantastic and very entertaining game on Saturday night, if you were not watching. The, uh, that, is, that is a sport that I think a lot of people need to uh, pay a little more attention to, because Ohio State is very, very good in, that, in uh, women's hockey. So keep an eye on that one this weekend. Uh, last night was Selection Sunday, and the Ohio State men's basketball team is officially headed to the NCAA tournament. Chris Holtman's team will face Loyola of Chicago, yes, the sister Jean Loyola, uh, Friday in Pittsburgh. The Buckeyes ended up as a seven seed. If they beat Loyola, they would likely face second-seeded Villanova on Sunday. So how do Ohio State and uh, Loyola match up? Let's ask Tony Gerdeman. He's my guest today because I knew he will only drink out of an NCAA-approved cup, so he's, he's officially safe to have on camera this week. So, Tony, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Tom. Uh, you mentioned Sister Jean, and I just started imagining, I don't know why, uh, Chris Holtman like, breaking down with a, like a macho man type of promo, cutting a promo <laughs> on Sister Jean about you know what he was going to do to her in the elbow drop and something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's fun when you get to um, there's there's a matchup against maybe a team that you don't know, but a program you're familiar with that has some lore around it, even if it's recent. Yeah, and uh, Loyola Chicago made the Final Four a few years back. They beat number one seed uh, Illinois last year. So yeah, there is definitely some tournament history there, even though that's not obviously a program that you would describe as a rival for Ohio State by any means. But maybe they will be after Friday. So. With the Buckeyes ending the season the way they did and losing four of their last five games, I don't think I went into this selection show thinking, you know, there's a lot of very good matchups out there for Ohio State right now. Like This, this is a great matchup for this team. But you look at Loyola and it's like, hmm, I, I don't think this is a even a good matchup for Ohio State. As I mentioned, they got to the Sweet 16 last year as an eight seed. They beat top seeded Illinois. Got a veteran backcourt. They play pretty good defense. They shoot the ball pretty well. I mean, like, None of this is something that would make me think like, yeah, I really love Ohio State's chances this week. I don't even know what a good matchup is for Ohio State anymore at this point. Usually I I look at size and whether or not EJ Liddell will be able to operate. And, you know, Loyola, Loyola doesn't necessarily have much size, but uh, do they have the athleticism that can also give them some trouble? I have, so I, I don't even know. What, what you don't want to see is, like a lineup of six, nine guys who are also guards <laughs> and they can defend and all of that. But uh, then you look at, it's just, they've had like seven different starting lineups because they've got like seven different guys with nine to 30 starts on the season and they're veteran. And when you start talking about the tournament, it's veterans and it's guards and they've got both of those things. And, you know, you look at the defensive rankings. I know one of the first things I look at when I uh, am pulling up a an NCAA tournament matchup, I pull up KenPalm.com, as I'm sure everyone does this time of year. Uh, Loyola, Loyola is 22nd in the nation in defensive efficiency this year. Um, our buddy Bill Landis pointed out on Twitter that uh, Lucas Williamson, one of their guards, is a two-time defensive player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. That should be an interesting matchup with Malachi Branham. Uh, Aher Yugu, Yuguak? Uh, is a six seven forward who was an all uh, conf- all defense uh, team for the Missouri Valley Conference this year. Should be an interesting matchup with EJ Liddell. Uh, one of their starting guards, Braden Norris, is from Hilliard, Ohio. Uh, if you are not familiar with uh, with the Columbus area, it is like a western suburb of Columbus. You could basically walk there from campus in a, an hour, hour and a half, something like that. So I'm guessing that's someone who may have gone to some Ohio State basketball games over the years. He shot better than 43% from three this year. Uh, Ohio State, 131st in defensive efficiency on Ken Palm. Uh, That is the worst of any of the teams that were any of the top nine seeds in the entire field. Tony, I had this in my notes, uh, and uh, (laughs) then we talked about it before the show. Tony, I'm getting Ryan Brewer vibes here. Uh, Is this going to turn into the Braden Norris game on Friday? I wouldn't be shocked if it did. And what's he scoring, like 10 or 11 points a Mm -hmm. game? So it's not like... He's a 24-point-a-game scorer. However, you know, I, I just simply tweeted out that uh, on uh, Sunday night that he's the second-leading scorer, and he's from Hilliard, and somebody replied, oh, great, he's going to go for 42. 
It's like, that's kind of the thing that, you know, it, I don't know uh, how often it happens. It's just, you know, expect it. Expect a, a hometown kid, if you will, to really be up for this game in time. I don't know how many people have walked from campus to Hilliard. I hope it's not a lot, uh, frankly, but um, yeah, that's something you've got to watch. And then you, you talk about the Ohio State defense. Uh, it almost it doesn't really matter how good you are offensively a lot of times when you're facing Ohio State because you're going to get open looks and you're going to get some bad fouls. And especially this time of year, you, you're asking um, for a lot if you're asking for Ohio State to suddenly be this outstanding defensive team because it's not really who they are. And you can just watch the past month of open looks taken against them. And you know, now is not the time when you're facing a team that has a bunch of three-point shooters like Loyola does, and they can shoot from wherever. And now you're asking everybody to be a much better defender than they have been. Even a guy like Eugene Brown, who plays because he's de- a defensive guy, has been uh, lacking defensively of late. So it's... Uh, as a seven ten, I don't know that it's a difficult matchup or a, a poor matchup or gosh, you know, there's no way they should be playing Loyola. It's like it's a seven ten. It's a toss up. It is what it is. And, and for Ohio State, toss ups have not been going their way lately. Although I guess it's probably been a while since they've played a toss up because they've been losing games that they should actually win. So maybe, maybe <laughs> this will be a new and exciting opportunity for them to win. Yeah, and this is going to be a game that I just have a feeling is going to be frustrating for Ohio State fans because this is Loyola is a team that does not play with a lot of tempo, so you're going to have a lot of uh, slow it down. And, you know, Ohio State, they they don't have anyone that's going to match up with EJ Liddell, uh, you know, in terms of athleticism instead of, it, you know, in, in, as a score or anything like that. They might not have anyone who matches up with Malachi Branham, but this might be a slow it down, you know, force you into bad shots long, frustrating uh, possessions on defense, you know, that that just seems like that might be sort of how this one shakes out. Um, the Big Ten got nine teams in the tournament this year, second year in a row. That is by far the most of any league. No one else had more than six. Six teams was the second most uh, for any conference. Five of the nine are seeded seventh or below. No one is higher than a third seed. Purdue and Wisconsin are in that three line. If you remember, last year the league also got nine teams in. Only one made it to the Sweet 16, and that was a year when Ohio State and Iowa were two seeds. They both got knocked out early. Illinois and Michigan were ones. Illinois got knocked out by Loyola. Michigan was the only one that made it to the Sweet 16 last year. They got to the Elite Eight, and they got knocked out. Tony, talk me out of shorting Big Ten stock very, very, very hard with my picks again this year. I I don't know know that I can. I did actually talk myself out of tweeting out that the Big Ten would be done by next Friday. So (laughs) I... Talk myself out of that, um, but I don't know if I believe it. Because even though these Big Ten teams, there's nine of them, and I saw Seth Davis say something like, hey, if you're going to do something, you should do it now. You've got so many teams. But it's like you've got a bunch of – it's like saying you've got 15 picks. You should have a great draft. You should be able to draft a franchise quarterback. It's like, well, but all of the picks are like in the third round through the sixth round. You're not really going to find a franchise in those rounds. And that's kind of where – the Big Ten is with these seeds, and I think Michigan State is probably good enough, certainly good enough to beat Duke in the second round, but also good enough, bad enough to lose in the first round, and that's really the that's the Big Ten in a nutshell, where Rutgers, Tom, could go to the Sweet 16, but also not make it into the field of 64, and uh, it's, it's, it's hard to put faith in that kind of, of uh, a descriptor, a description, um, when you've got all of these teams that are just like that. I like, I, I like the potential of Iowa. They've got size. They've got shooting. I like the potential of Purdue with Jaden Ivey and their size. And, and and then yet you see what the way they've struggled at times. And Jaden Ivey is not the best shooter, but sometimes he tries to shoot like he is. And all of these teams have flaws. And really, if they're going to make a run it's one of those things where they have to all be better than they are. Any of these teams has to be better than their average, which I think probably goes for every, every, almost everybody, but especially when you've got teams that aren't great, they're just pretty good, and that's really what the Big Ten is. Yeah, and if you look through the uh, the Ken Palm rankings, there are certain things that will jump out to you. He's got them you know, ranked by team ranking, and then he has the seed next to him. 
Uh, uh, third third seeded Wisconsin is behind both Ohio State and Michigan in those rankings. Thirty fourth in the nation in Ken Palm. Uh, you know that when you're when you're filling out your bracket, if you fill out your bracket the way I do, that's the kind of thing you look at and you go, hmm. I wonder if they might not make it to the second weekend. Third seed Wisconsin. Hmm. And uh, you know, I mean, that's that is uh, th- that's. You know, that's one of the presumably one of the teams with the best, you know, the best uh, matchups to uh, to presumably move forward out of the Big Ten. So, yeah, I think I think that's a little concern. I don't think you talked me out of that one. You mentioned the field of 64. So, all right, we're going to dive into this. I posted this on Twitter on uh, Sunday night. This is we generally don't traffic in hot takes on this show, but I have one about the NCAA tournament. And Tony, here it is. It is absolute garbage, garbage that there are conference champions who have to play in those stupid Tuesday play in games in Dayton. You save those for the 11 seeds, the at-large teams who barely scraped into the field. Like, congratulations, Michigan. You probably don't deserve to be here, but you're going to at least have to earn your way in by playing in Dayton on Tuesday instead of making some 16 seed from some minor, tiny conference that, you know, this is the the greatest achievement in school history, and they go have to go play another 16 seed in Dayton before the actual tournament starts on Thursday because, as we all know, Tuesday is not canon. The actual tournament starts on Thursday. It always has. Tony, if you win your league, you have earned your right to play in the actual tournament. You should not get sent to Dayton on Tuesday. Only the crappy at-larges who are barely, you know, just lucky to be in there, who have not done anything to earn their way in, just lucky to be in there. Only they go to Dayton on Tuesday. If I rule the college basketball world, Tony, am I wrong about any of that? You're not wrong about any of that. And when they expanded the field, all they did was punish conference champions. and. It's ridiculous that they do that. Uh, really, you could have had all 11 seeds. You could have had Rutgers, Michigan, you throw Indiana in there, like all of these different teams that should they, shouldn't they, where there are arguments. If you win your conference and you have an auto bid, the argument is gone. This should only be for teams with arguments. And it's it's. I always get a little sad, not Dick Vitale sad when he's watching the tournament and not seeing teams <laughs> that, that should be make it. But I get a little sad when you see the reactions from the 16 or the 11 or whatever, you know, the conference champion that knows they're in, but they, the camera's on them. They see them. Oh, we get, we have to do the the play in. And, uh, you know, it's like, you should, you shouldn't even have to, that should never have even been a consideration. You earned your way in. You, you played in in your tournament. You did what you needed to do. Uh, Now, uh, if we want to get into, should the, the tournament, way more than the regular season that's a different argument but every the ncaa tournament the auto bids are tied to the tournament so to the to the conference tournament so that's where there has to be value and the ncaa tournament has removed some of that value with these uh play-ins by not allowing um by keeping conference championships conference champions in those games i i'm with you it's terrible it's unfortunate uh, and because it's it's not really the tournament, so oh gosh, we this, like you feel for these kids, mm-hmm. fifth year senior finally making the tournament. But did you? I mean, you you lost on a Tuesday in Dayton. I mean, you're not really in the tournament. And one of the teams this year that is in the first four is Wright State, which gets the privilege of playing a game on a Tuesday in its hometown. Like, cool! What a thrill this is. How what a fun, <laughs> different, unique experience this is. For us to play a game in Dayton, Ohio, cool, good, way to go. Yeah, that that has just that has always uh, been one of those. Uh, you know, I, I don't really do many of those. Uh, you know, it really grinds my gears kind of segments mm-hmm. on this show. But yes, that is that is one of those. Like, I, and I'm sure, I'm sure it sets up more good TV ratings for our corporate champions at CBS, and that's the reason for it. But uh, yes, it is. Tony, you're not going to believe it, but our corporate champions at CBS may outrank uh, may outrank the uh, student athlete experience in some ways in this billion dollar enterprise we call amateur athletics. Tony, thank you for joining me. Uh, that'll do it for today. We will be back uh, later this week with a probably slightly less cynical look at uh, the uh, NCAA tournament on the Buckeye Weekly Show. Uh, we'll have uh, plenty of uh, plenty to chat about there on about college basketball. We're going to I think, do some listener question shows there as well. We did a live episode on Friday talking about all sorts of fun stuff. So you can check that out as well. And uh, make sure you check out all of our other great podcasts. Kevin Noon does the Big Me Kickoff show. Alex Gleitman does Around the Oval. 
Build the Bank Green and Mark Givler do Gives in the Bank. Tony and I do Buckeye Weekly. Wherever you get this, this show, you can get those shows. Just uh, search Buckeye Scoop to find all of them. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.